Hi, hi. Welcome back. For those who are new here, I prepare videos to help my students score better in their STPM Maths T paper. In this part of the video, we will talk about how we can apply what we learned before in solving polynomials. Let's check out the example. Look at this polynomial. When we want to solve this polynomial, the first thing, maybe you can find a factor, the law do down division. Now, I'm not going to do that for this one because I noticed that there are common factors in this equation. So, although this is power of 5, but there is a common factor. I can see a 2 and a x which can be factorized out. Next one is I will check. Can I factor this? Yes. I can factor this trinomial. So I will get x squared minus 3 and x squared minus 4. Then I need to check again if I can still factor this equation further. I notice behind here x squared minus 4, this minus 4 can be 2 squared. So, I can use this formula. If you have not learned all this factoring theorem, I suggest you uh, go back to my old video, the one that I talked about the first part of my polynomial, solving polynomial. I will leave a link below. Please check it out first. Okay? So, by using this formula, I can change my x squared minus 4 or I can factorize it into x plus 2, x minus 2 following the formula or factorizing it. Well, once I'm done with that, I actually can know that I can already solve this polynomial. Okay, so how do I do so? Let me show you. Now, let's say if I have this, uh, let me change this. Okay, so I have my 2x equals to 0. So, I have x equals to 0. That is for the first part of the equation. For the second one, I have x squared minus 3 equals to 0. So, I will have x squared equals to 3. So, x is equals to the square root or uh, the positive negative of square root 3. Okay, that's the second part of the answer, negative 3 and 3. Then I have next one will be x plus 2 equals to 0. So I will get x equals to negative 2. Lastly, I have x minus 2 equals to 0, x equals to 2. So that will be the one that I get in the answer that so i have already solved this polynomial okay so the first rule is always check if there is any common monomial that i can factorize out before i do the equation how about this question in this polynomial i don't see any common factor here but I, although this is power of 4, I can actually factorize this trinomial. So I will try to factorize it first. Then I have to think, is there any of theorem that I can use? So for example, x squared minus, this is 5 squared, 25. x squared minus 2 squared. So, I can use this formula. So, I can factorize this into x plus 5, x minus 5, x plus 2, and x minus 2. Well, I can solve this and I will get x plus 5 equals to 0, x equals to negative 5, and so on. Okay, so I will get the answer. 
I will not bore you with the working for that. Just now I've shown once. So I consider you could understand. Okay, so just take all this bracket equals to zero one by one and you will get the answer out. Now for this third question, you can't actually uh, find any fact, common factor from here and you can factorize this directly. So I will check if I can use the grouping method. So I will check if this is fits the ratio. So for the first one, 1 ratio with 2, 1 to 2. The second one is 9 to 18 and it will also give you the ratio 1 to 2. So I can actually use the factoring by grouping technique. So what will happen is the first part here, I can find the common factor which is x squared i will bring that out then what is balanced is x minus 2. for the second part i will bring out 9 so i'll put there negative so here will transform to negative i bring out 9 i have a 2 as balance so the ratio that i have 1 2 can be seen here so x minus 2 and x minus 2, I can actually factorize that out. Once that is done, so I have x squared minus 9 left there. When I get this, I need to see if I can factorize further. Because to solve a polynomial, you have to make sure you factorize until the end. Okay, so I notice that this one here is 3 squared. So I can actually use this formula. I can factorize this. So I can still factorize this and I will get x minus 2 from the first part and x plus 3 and x minus 3 for the second part. Okay, so now I can solve this polynomial. So question 3 is done. Let's check out this question. Now when you look at this question, you will be thinking, oh, I need to uh, uh, open up this bracket and bring the 9 over. Well, this is a special case. Because I see these two parts here are the same. Now, when I have this case, this type of case, what I do is, I will take the two number behind and... I will plus them together, so negative 5 plus 3, and I will divide by 2. I will get negative 1. So I'm going to put this negative 1 for this x squared minus 5. I will put the negative 1 there. Then I will think what else I need to transform negative 1 to negative 5. So I need to put another negative 4. So negative 1 plus negative 4, I get negative 5. Okay, the second part is x squared minus 5x, still the same. I still have that negative 1, which I create just now. And then I have to think what I need to plus or minus to get back 3. So I have to plus 4. So if you notice, I have x squared minus 5x minus 1 and x squared minus 5x minus 1. So I have these two parts the same. Behind, I have minus 4. Here, plus 4. Then I have to think if there is any theorem that fits this. Look at this one. I have a plus b, a minus b. So I have here is a, x squared minus 5x is minus 1 is a. And then I have minus b. And this part here is a. And then I have plus b plus some number so this one fits this formula so my a squared is going to be x squared minus 5 minus 1 okay so that is my a squared and my b squared will be minus 4 squared equals to 9 so the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm just going to bring this over Okay, this number 
minus 4 squared. Bring over, I will have 25. Next thing is, I'm going to get rid of the squared. So I have plus minus 5 there. Okay. So once I have that, next will be, I will open up these two brackets. Okay, so I have x squared minus 5x minus 1 equals to 5. And I have x squared minus 5x minus 1 equals to negative 5. Once that is done, then I can actually solve this equation. So I will bring 5 over. So that will be x squared minus 5x minus 6. And I will check if I can factorize this trinomial. Okay, so I can actually factorize this. And this will end up as x equals to 6 and x equals to negative 1. For the second part here, I bring this negative 5 over. So I have plus 5. So I will have x squared minus 5x plus 4. And then I need to check if I can factorize this, of course. And I will get x minus 4, x minus 1. And lastly, it will end up like this. Okay, so now I have already solved this equation. And the x is going to be negative 1, 1, 4, and 6. For this question, for this polynomial, well, actually, all the theorems we can't use. But anyway, this question gave us a clue. They gave us that the factor uh, is 2x plus 1. But of course, they asked us to use the factor theorem to prove that this is a factor first. Well, what we are going to do is, we are going to write x equals to negative 1 over 2. From here, 2x plus 1 equals to 0. We get x is negative 1 over 2. We get that number, we put it inside a function, we press calculator and show that it is 0. If we can show that that is a 0, therefore we can confirm that x plus 1 is a factor. Now this question gave you a clue. But if they don't give you a clue, what you do is you look at the last number here and we need to try uh, to do trial and error to find one factor. That I think I have shown you in my previous video when I teach how to do long division. If you have not seen that video, I will leave a link below. Now, when they ask you to find the solution of this equation, what you need to do is you will take that factor and you will do long division. The link will be below if you have not seen the long division uh, video. Well, with this long division done, we can write this as 2x plus 1 as the divisor and the quotient as x squared minus 4x plus 1. Once we have done that, then what we are going to do is we are going to factor this uh, equation because they want us to find the solution when fx equals to 0. So we will take 2x plus 1 and x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals to 0. So the first side, we have 2x plus 1 equals to 0, x equals to negative 1 over 2. Of course, we know that is the factor because it's given inside the question. But the second part, we have this x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals to 0. Well, can we factorize this? Is there any roots here? Let's check. When we do bx minus 4ac, we notice there is a root. So, we can actually try to factorize this, which is a bit hard. So, we need to use either the completing the square or the formula. I try the completing the square. Let me show you how to do completing the square first. Okay, let me change this first. Right. So you have x squared 
minus 4x plus 1 equals to 0. To do completing the square, I will have to prepare the square, of course. I will put a x there. I will put a minus there. And then I'm going to copy this part here, plus 1. 1 equals to 0. So to do completing the square, I will have to get those numbers out. Okay. So what I do is, I will take whatever in front of x, for example, this part here. I will divide that with 2. Divide by 2. And I will get here is negative 2. Once that is done, then I will take this part over here, this part over here, and I will square it and write my answer there. Square it. Okay, I'm sorry. I will square that. So negative 2 squared will be 4. So my completing the square is ready. That's how I get the answer over here. Okay, so now that it is done, the completing the square is ready, then I will put it as negative, uh, negative 4 plus 1 is 3, so bring it over. And this square root, I will get it into uh, plus minus negative 3. So my answer will be x equals to 2 plus minus square root of 3. Okay. Now, well, if I do not want to use this method, I can also use this formula. Okay, so the A will be 1, the B will be negative uh, 4, and the C will be 1. I can fill it into this formula and I still will get this answer. So I'm just teaching you the two methods that you can solve uh, something that you cannot factorize. Okay, so uh, what we have there is the end of the video. So I'm going to talk about trigonometric functions. Give me a like, introduce me to your friend, and please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye.